Welcome to our video on classification of torsional transients for turbo machinery. I'm Robert Whitney. I'm an engineer at Riverhawk Company. By the end of this presentation, you should have a better understanding of how to distinguish the five most common torsional dynamic types. Torque issues are often blamed for equipment damage or instability that's observed through machinery measurements. The purpose of this discussion is to add structure to the language used to describe these issues and hopefully help get to a solution more efficiently. Here we're going to break down five common types of torsional issues. Low level steady dynamic, high level steady dynamic, high level passing dynamic, high energy spike, and infinite energy spike. You'll notice the first three types have the word dynamic in them. That means that there's dynamic interaction that occurs in association with the excitation itself. Okay, this talk focuses primarily on land-based processing machinery. This could be a chemical process, petrochemical process, or power generation, amongst other things. And the machines we're taught focusing on today are prime movers. These are the prime machines that drive the process. Usually this is turbo machinery. Okay, we'll start with low level steady dynamic case. This is associated with equipment that normally runs smoothly. Excitation levels are low. The excitations may range from a half a percent to a couple of percent of the operating torque. The important factor is that this excitation is long duration and is usually not synchronous, usually below the operating speed. In these cases, Dynamic interaction definitely is, occurs between the excitation energy and the shaft natural frequencies. And, in, and you'll see in the coming graph that the low damping in the equipment leads to magnification of the dynamic torques. Here you see in this graph, the red line represents the operating torque being put into the machinery. It's fairly flat. You see a slight ripple here. However, when that ripple, the frequency of that ripple matches a natural frequency of the shaft, the energy of that ripple gradually pumps into the torque response of the shaft, building to a very high level. Now, equipment is usually designed and built to avoid this case. Small changes lead to a convergence between the excitation and the mechanical characteristic could be noise in the power supply, a torque imbalance within the process machinery, or it could be a fluid property that varies leading to unintended load conditions. Problems usually also come on unexpectedly without warning. Potential excitation sources are variable frequency drive machines or vein passage on screw pumps or blowers. The next case is high level steady dynamics. Now this is not normally associated with a turbo machine, it's usually associated with a reciprocating machine. However, it is very similar to the low, low level case, I'll talk about it here a little bit. In this case, those excitations are much greater. <clears throat> they are also expected, reciprocating machinery is known to cause large alternating torques. These could be, to be between 20 and 150 percent of the operating torque depending on how the machine is loaded. These excitations are also continuous but they're also multiple of a shaft speed, could, usually known as harmonics. Now since you know the frequencies these are going to occur at, you want to make sure that the natural frequencies do not match the excitations. To do this, operators generally limit the speeds to avoid an overlap of the excitation and the natural frequency. Now, it's important to understand with the high dynamic energies, you absolutely have to avoid these frequencies or the machines will self-destruct very quickly. So avoidance is very important, normally practiced. However, stiffness changes can change if a stiffness change occurs in the machine, you can 
have a natural frequency actually drift into an excitation frequency. What could cause that? Could be loosening a shaft connection, could be a change, change out of a piece of equipment with something similar but not exactly the same, like say a coupling. <clears throat> One of the things about these, the machines and these that experience these, these reciprocating machines that experience the high, high energy dynamics, these tend to be it's understood that there's a lot of dynamic energy in these machines, making them limited life, so occasional failures are somewhat expected. Okay, so now we're moving on to a high-level passing dynamic. These are associated with grid-connected equipment. Grid meaning the electrical grid. This could be a synchronous motor for startups, could be a generator or a motor, under, under certain conditions where you might get excitations from the grid. The excitation levels of these may range from 75% to 150% of the continuous operating torque. However, unlike the steady one that we just talked about, you have a short excitation time. This limits the dynamic energy to something that can be, can be designed around. Now in this case, Interaction between the excitation energy and the shaft natural frequency does occur, and low damping in the equipment does magnify the dynamic torque that the equipment sees. So here's a graph of what that might look like as, as this event occurs. So usually what happens in these cases, the excitation frequency varies leading up to the event. When the excitation frequency crosses over the natural frequency, you get a short amplification. So if you look from, one, look from the left to the right, you'll see that there's a, a quickly building uh, response. This is a response curve, by the way. You'll see that the response quickly builds to a peak and then it also quickly dies. And that's because the, the driving frequency has now passed the natural frequency. The important thing here, you might note, is that the, that the straight line is 100% of the operating torque. The peaks on this graph can be many times, maybe 10 or 15 times the operating torque, meaning that the equipment has to be extremely robust. So here's a case that of common transients. Synchronous motor startups are a, are a well-known case. And for each machine, this is a known condition. The important factor here is that op going through these, each start makes the machine life a limiting factor. And you have to design for this. Both generators or motors can also experience disturbances within the electrical grid. In both of these cases, operators like to drive through if possible. This takes us to high energy spikes. These as well tend to be associated with grid-connected equipment. Common cases are motor short circuits or synchronization of a generator to the grid. They tend to be single cycle events. That means one pulse excites the train. These excitations can be several times the normal operating torque. There is some di dynamic interaction. However, that's limited to ring down. So you're not building energy during excitation. You just have one and the machinery rings down to its normal operating condition. And as well, users like to drive through these when they can, if they can avoid damage. Here's a graph that depicts an, appro an approximation of a single cycle event. Here you might see the, a couple of cycles of excitation before the actual event. This would be the red line. Then you have your event spike and the machinery response follows that spike and then goes into a ring down. Finally, we have the infinite energy spike. This is basically a sudden equipment stoppage. Okay? One machine fails within the string. The, exc the excitation levels are extremely high, many, many times the normal torque. These are, tend to be single cycle events. Dynamic interaction really is not a factor here. It does, there is a ring down, but usually there's a separation in the string. 
and users basically want to avoid damage to the connected equipment. Drive-through in these cases is just generally considered not likely. Here's a little graph of, a, of that excitation case. You have a, a disturbance coming and then all of a sudden you have a spike that just goes right through the graph. Right about that time you get a separation of equipment and hopefully if you control that separation to a particular say protective device then your downstream equipment can be protected. Otherwise a failure in a motor might destroy a gearbox and a compressor and vice versa. We have covered the five most commonly encountered torsional dynamic events. In coming videos, we will discuss solutions that make machinery more robust to the events that we discussed here. If you found this video informative and would like to see more content like this, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and be sure to ring the bell to receive notifications when a new video is published. For the Riverhawk Company, I'm Robert Whitney. And thank you for watching.